Do you really like Packard Pokesat and want to promote the show? Then go to cafepress.com slash Packard Pokesat. There are hundreds of items available, including hats, shirts, hoodies, and so much more. Every purchase from cafepress.com slash Packard Pokesat helps support the show. Your Packard Pokesat coffee mug is waiting for you. Do you want to stream Packard Pokesat on your iPhone or BlackBerry? Download Stitcher free today at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokeset. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic. And joining us tonight from the far east coast is Joe Unseen. Expecto Patronum. <laughs> Expecto my underwear. No, that's a different. I'm sorry. That's a different. That's a different spell. Use that one at the bar. <laughs> and join us from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic Nine. Holy honeybee, Batman! <laughs> <laughs> I be, I just found out about this recent show. Uh, it's called Beware the Batman. Actually, so I was I, I I've been getting into it it's a little bit. So that's a real podcast. Yeah, no, it's not a podcast. It's actually a, a TV show, apparently. Oh, yeah, it's it's okay. it's actually it's it's all uh, computer animation. It's really actually kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, we'll be talking more about Batman pretty soon, actually. But <laughs> 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 just to motor the wet wind's mouth. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get on to our first topic for this evening. Building a better future, science and technology. Science. Oh, by the way, this is episode 147. I forgot again. <laughs> if you have $250,000 to spare, please donate it to Packard Pokes. <laughs> we can sure use the money. <laughs> but if you don't have $250,000 to spare... For us, you could use it to go on a ride into space. Virgin Galactic is going to start setting up space flights set for later this year. So if you've got that kind of cash sitting in your wallet, have nothing else to do with it, then jump on that the next thing to the Vomit Comet. And I'm sure you've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out how fast $250,000 really goes. It, it, Apparently, they've already completed all their flight tests, and they've sold 680 tickets. That is a lot of green just for those that just for that one flight. Now, it's supposed to be able to make this commercial flight uh, by the billionaire entrepreneur Sir Richard Branson. He's the guy who founded Virgin Mobile. They're just waiting for the Federal Aviation Administration to make its final commercial license. If I remember reading this right, it's going to start uh, one part of the country and end up in the other. So you're going to end up having it uh, probably about a two-minute flight, I think, two maybe five-minute flight. Joe, your thoughts? Yeah, it's expensive, and the trips aren't very long. But this is the beginning of the dream that many people have had, uh, the dream that one day space would be opened up to civilians and not kept as something that only astronauts and cosmonauts could experience. And uh, while the price tag does limit this experience to a select few who can afford it. Like I said, it's the beginning. Air travel and ocean voyages were once so expensive that regular people didn't have access to them. This is true. It took, it took development and commercialization of the technology to bring down the cost. So, you know, who knows? Perhaps in our lifetimes, we will be in a situation where a trip to space will be within our reach. Mm-hmm. Cue just... fanfare music. Right. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> I just hope they don't name the first flight the Titanic. <laughs> you passengers down in craft ever made. <laughs> it's the safest vessel ever made. It is unexplodable. It's unexplodable. <laughs> <laughs> you people in the cargo hold, you can just stay down there. Don't worry about it. Nothing's wrong up here. Connie, your thoughts? It's an absolutely fascinating story and a really great website. I'd encourage anybody who hasn't gone there, go look at this ship. Go look at all of the ships that Virgin has been making. Um, this is a totally composite material ship. It's a hybrid form of fuel with oxidized. Uh, oxidizer is the liquid, which is nitrous oxide, and mm -hmm. the fuel is rubberized compound. Both are benign and stable. You can sh turn this on and turn it off, unlike other rocket fuel where you hit the burst and that's it. 
and it's like a two to three day experience too because evidently you go to like a flight school learn how to move in zero gravity mm -hmm. and they really they care about the health of the people if there's they said most everybody will be able to do it there's just a very small percentage who may actually pay for this and they'd have to be refunded because they don't have enough health to go up there but I'm actually quite frightened of the idea of outer space but yeah. this looks like an amazing experience and Oh, and let me just say too, Frank Lloyd Wright would be so impressed just with the space oh, dock. Absolutely, this, you know, it's it's gorgeous and um, it's ex an extremely intelligently uh, thought out. The whole building looks like I don't know. It looks like a giant stingray or something. It's really <laughs> cool, really sexy looking. So I love the uh, idea that Virgin Air wants this to be something that's sustainable and you know environmentally friendly and. They also will be sending up payloads, like launching uh, satellites with the um, the Eve, the the ship that the double double bodied ship that takes the glider up, because it's basically a glider ship that goes into the space. They they glide up to fifty thousand feet and then they hit the booster, mm -hmm. and for a short burst. It's I don't know. Anyway, it was really a fascinating read. Yeah, I was looking at their website here. It's an overview of their uh, the mm -hmm. experience, what they're calling, so you can get on there. The it looked the I don't know it's, if it's just the building or whatever, but it kind of looks like a uh, a donut hole or kind of a don't like a donut with a, with that's, the that's the Mojave spaceport. Is that the yeah? Well, it kind of looks like a, it looks like a it looks like a half eaten donut. It, Did you see the art like, or a toilet specs? seat even? Did it, you see the architecture drawing painting of it though? It. The, Right now, it's not completed. It's, I'm going. How do we go from? I see a beautiful. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying that's know, what it looked like to me. See a donut. I see it. I see it's either a donut or a toilet seat cover. It just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it oh, could just be the way it's. Own, it's just the way it's drawn so. to me. But that's. <laughs> Are you hungry, Packard? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, that's just too good. Too good. Okay. The cool uh, thing about, yeah. you mentioned their website. The cool thing about the website is it has a booking tab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can actually click on that, like, you know, throw it on your credit card, be like, yeah, I think I'll go to space next week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. If nothing else, you can click on the download the brochure and, and yeah. say, yeah. what I can do. Yeah. So, and, and, and dream. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they, they they can build a uh, space station whatever whatever they want to with eighty million dollars. I mean, gosh, they can make it look like whatever. I guess it's 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 like that movie Elysium, where all us Earth peasants are dreaming of one day getting to Elysium and <laughs> receiving basic <laughs> medical care and stuff. Like, yes. <laughs> right. Oh okay. goodness. Okay. Well, let's get on to our uh, next topic for this evening. Well. I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. We said we'd be talking about Batman, and we were not kidding. There's a group out in Michigan that they think they're superheroes. And there are people who out there I consider to be superheroes. I call them the fire department, the police department, you know, the people who actually go out there and do their job. But these guys, they actually dress up like Batman, Robin... All of those characters. There's this picture on here of this guy that's out in Michigan here. His name is East East Jordan. And, uh, oh, no, that's in the city. I'm sorry, East Jordan. Mark <laughs> Williams. It's Mark Williams, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Mark Williams. And mm -hmm. he's dressed up as Batman. And what's the most amazing thing about this picture? He's not alone. He's with his <laughs> girlfriend in a bat costume walking with him in the freaking snow. If I knew it was this easy to get a girl that would dress up like this, I would have gone out dressed like this years ago. But <laughs> <laughs> it's called Comic Con. Yeah. Oh, that's what that's called. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll get you a ticket next time. Get me a ticket, you. please, next time. Uh, the, his girlfriend's <laughs> name is uh, well, is is, is uh, named Brittany Scott. So I was like, okay, and, and she and she's not. Kind of, kind of put this when we were talking about this. Like, what's not what's wrong with him, but what's wrong with her? <laughs> Why did she go for this guy? But I mean, he he's got it going on with the outfit. I mean, it looks good, except the fact he's got a little beard going on. I mean, it's not like this. This is, well, of course, this a little bit needs a little bit of trim. But the 
He's I midlife think, crisis Batman. He's midlife crisis Batman. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's what's the funny about this story? Isn't that you know that sounds like it's not such a a bad thing, but the problem is. There was actually, this used to be one large group, and then a couple of the guys that were in the group, because, you know, superheroes are kind of, I, I don't know, they're, they're ego-eccentric. So they, you know, they think that they're, they're the shit, basically. And these people who think that they're superheroes got into a little tiff, and so the group separated. Well, the leader of the one, he's called Beasting. And he's a bit of an asshole. He's apparently he's been arrested several mm. times. He's got <laughs> uh, there's actually a wiki on this guy. He's known as his Beasting he is the hero. He has a wiki. He, his category is a vigilante. Oh my god. He, he's, his name is Adam Besso. <laughs> his status is inactive. So he's an inactive here oh, superhero. No. <laughs> But the thing is, which is really funny, there the equipment he says to have carried he carries is a bulletproof vest, armored jacket, pants, and gloves. Armored jacket, he's well, whatever. Pepper spray, Doppler holster with sidearm, tofen, tonafa. What the fuck is a tonafa? T O N F A. What the fuck is a tonafa? Uh, tonafino. To, tonafino. Uh, <laughs> handcuffs, first aid, trauma kit, video camera, and flashlight. Don't move, or the beast thing is gonna flash you. Mm. <laughs> Abilities is advanced CPR, advanced no advanced first aid CPR and jitsu. You know, don't move. I'll heal you up with my jitsu. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was really bad. <laughs> I, I found his um his his wiki on um real life superhero wiki. <laughs> <laughs> I got I found mine over at uh, RLS uh, RLSH wiki. That's, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, there's a picture of him, and he he looks like he's dressed like a cop with yellow um, stripes on him. Yep, and, and a so. face mask and everything like that. He, oh my yeah. god, he does the face mask. <laughs> he looks like a Mexican wrestler. <laughs> he does. He really does. Joe, your thoughts. <laughs> You see, this is how supervillains are created. Once friends, <laughs> now enemies, bitter rivals to the end. Batman and Beasting are, are now, like, they, they got baptized together. Mm -hmm. And now they don't even speak to each other. They hate each other. And uh, the people of Petoskey, Michigan, might have an epic super battle on their hands before they know it. <laughs> <clears throat> now, you alluded to this earlier, uh, Beasting accused Petoski Batman of having two girlfriends. Yes. And Petoski Batman told Beasting, uh, he told Beasting's girlfriend that he cheated on her. Mm -hmm. So these guys must have real superpowers of some sort because they're getting laid. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> yeah, Batman's actually the guy who's playing Batman. He's got two girlfriends. Apparently, they know each other because they both came to the to a Thanksgiving right. dinner together. He, he brags and, about it. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> he's like yeah. oh, no big deal. I, I'm sorry. I, I should have talked about that, but I was like, eh, I didn't want to really get into his sex life. But, you know, kudos for him if he has two ladies. You know, if it was a woman and two guys, kudos for her, too. Either way. This, this is Batgirl, and this is the other one. This is Batgirl and my other Batgirl. <laughs> this is Batgirl and this is Robin. Uh-huh. <laughs> We both can't be back or she's wearing the same outfit as I am. <laughs> Dave, Dave corrects me in the chat room. It's Petoskey. I tried I tried to do it justice, but I'm not from Michigan. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, this article, uh, it talks about how they were tight and now they're, they're not. And it gets a quote from Petoskey Batman. He says, quote, it drives me insane. I'll scream from the rooftops until Beasting is shown for what he truly is. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping you were going to do that tonight. I mean, these guys, these guys take their superhero shit pretty seriously. <laughs> yes. Oh, in mean, current three, 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 three in the bat in the, in the bat channel in the bat channel it says in the bat, bat girl says. in the in the in the bat cave. It says bat girl and tech girl. <laughs> one fights crime. One fixes the computers on the car. One's actually a robot. <laughs> one's actually a robot. Oh, that'd be some hard pounds. Uh, <laughs> hey, they're a bunch of geeks. Of course, one of them's a robot. <laughs> or. Like, yo, last weekend I had a threesome. It was pretty hot. It was me, my girlfriend, and the robot. <laughs> That's like me, my girlfriend, and the computer. <laughs> the laptop. 
the toaster. <laughs> the toaster. <laughs> you mean your girlfriend is the computer? Yeah, no. Oh. <laughs> Con- Connie, your thoughts? Well, you see, this is an intrinsic problem with being a superhero is only one person can be the superhero, and the other person's designated to be the sidekick. Uh-huh. And if you're really bad, then you're Alfred. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's what this rivalry is about and it's like it's, there was somebody else who said this is like reading some junior hires Facebook page it's really it's really just so funny how seriously they're taking this and I'm uh-huh. like wow this is a whole other world you live in oh yeah uh, yeah it's oh it's funny um, uh, real quick your uh, current uh, 3333 in the chat room goes hey 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 you only have sex with a toaster if you put in a psychic active gel in it no that's the, that's from ghostbusters totally different genre <laughs> <laughs> still geeky though <laughs> still geeky and then later you can make the statue of liberty walk right <laughs> also from Karn. i'm not stealing his joke <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, oh. this is you, anything else on that, Connie? Oh no, no. I just, I just, like I said, I kind of hear Bee Sting's voice as like uh, uh, Star Scream, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do, hey, Bee Sting, get out of my lair! This is, okay. this bat cave is not big enough for the both of us. <laughs> we know Beasting, uh, the article mentions Beasting uh, getting arrested. Um, mm-hmm. He would dress up as a superhero, drive around in his car, looking like on patrol, quote unquote patrol, mm-hmm. with a shotgun. Yes. And he, he was in a trailer park and he approached a guy who was revving his motorcycle after midnight mm-hmm. and was like, hey, buddy, you got to stop doing that. The innocent civilians of this trailer park are trying to sleep. And the guy on the bike was just like, oh, yeah, fuck you. And they got into a fight. The gun went off. <laughs> You know, and he got arrested for that. He went to jail. It's right. Like, what the hell are you doing? You'd go around in the middle of the night with a shotgun looking for trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was, you know, it was also the guy who played, who was doing the Batman thing there. He, when he first started out, that he he tried he tried he tried to stop a fight or something, and then these guy then he started getting chased. I could just see this: a bunch of guy drunk drunk guys. He got chased by a gang of drunks. Yeah, gang gang of drunks, and yeah. then he got charged for disorderly conduct. Well, he was he, he he forgot his batarang. He was hanging from a ledge. <laughs> he ran yeah, to the roof. He, he of ran under the yeah, hardware he, store, yep. and then you find him hanging off the. I know. How is that? How, how does how does from a ledge? To, yeah, that's the, disturbing exact, the peace. Exactly. How I was gonna I was just gonna say that. How is him mm-hmm. hanging from a roof disturbing yeah. the peace? He was the one that got chased. I mean, just because he's dressed. What if the the costume he, aside? The costume aside, let's pack say he the shark gets... repellent. He forgot to pack the battery. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Though, I'm seriously. Put yourself in the police position. You show up to a police call. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's shouting. There's yelling. There's a group of guys running around. You show up and you find a guy in a Batman costume hanging from a roof. <laughs> I'd be laughing my ass off, <laughs> taking pictures. You look left. You look right. You say, "All right, buddy." I had to drop my donut for this. You're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I I still wouldn't have charged him. I it would been me. I would have I would have found a way to. to, to what get were him you off. doing out here? Picking fights with drunks. All right, you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say anything about the drunks. The drunks were smart enough to leave. Yeah, yeah they got out of there. Yeah. Like, shut the cops. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing anyway, see here, officer, just helping you out. Same side, same side. <laughs> <laughs> see, the the problem here is the guy basting the guy that got in the uh, the fight with the guy at the trailer park. See, mm-hmm. he made the classic mistake. He stuck around. All superheroes know this. This is superhero one hundred and one. After you take the villain down and you arrest him or whatever, you ha- you handcuff him, or, then you leave. You don't stick around for th- autographs. Ah yeah. uh, yes, <laughs> yes. At my my class, my Batman was always Adam West. Let's leave inconspicuously, Robin. That's out right. The window. Yeah. <laughs> no one will see us jumping <laughs> off this forty-story building, <laughs> climbing down the side. <laughs> they won't be looking well, up. They'll be looking logical. forward. Yeah, yeah. this is so much Hold weird. Hold the rope and walk along the floor. We'll just turn the camera on its side. It'll look like you're going up a building. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love those are cheesy effects. Oh gosh. <laughs> I loved Batman when I was a kid. I, yeah. It was my show. Uh, speaking of cheesy effects, if you have a comment for our cheesy effects, you give us a call here at 662-709-PPAP or 662-709-7727. And if you don't want to 
hear your voice played here on the air, you can reach us in other ways. We have email and Twitter and Gmail and all those other fine places. And we're going to give you all the information how to do contact us there right now. Would you like to contact us? Your host, Packard Sonic, and his very honored and crazy co-host with occasional guest hosts enjoy your comments or suggestions. You can reach us 28 hours a day, eight days a week on a can on a string, smoke signals, Star Trek communicator. Those may not work, but you can contact us on Twitter as Packard Pokes at and by email at Packard Pokes at at gmail.com. You can also listen and join in the conversation live Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on vonlive.tv slash Packard Pokes at. You can find past shows on iTunes, YouTube, Mixler Radio, and Stitcher Radio. Help us out by rating, commenting, subscribing, retweeting, and reposting the show wherever you can. Click the like button on Facebook slash Packard Pokes at to join in the conversation. Would you like to help keep the show running and pick up some awesome Packard Pokes at merchandise? Visit cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at today and buy hats, shirts, or one of over 300 other items that are also available. Visit PackardPokesAt.wordpress.com for links to the news articles covered tonight and more information on this or other episodes. We hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for listening and your support. And thank you, Joe. Damn, you do a good job of that. What? what you, I thought I heard a little difference in your voice on that one. Yeah, I try to change it up sometimes. <laughs> You said it just a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, let my hair down. Yeah. Get, get a little wild. <laughs> anyway, let's get into our next topic for this evening. And tonight we have a video from you. Now, this one is from Klein Schmidt. Klein Schmidt. Klein Schmidt? Klein Schmidt. He might as well be main dipshit for the kind of crap that comes out of his mouth. And this time, and he said something about our U.S. military that, you know, I, I hate to say that, you know, sometimes they say you're just following orders. But sometimes that's just what you have to do. If you've ever been in the military, that's your job. You just follow orders. And they do what they have to do. And I'm not saying it's an excuse for some of the things that happen sometimes, but what he said about the military, about some people who were in the military, I found deeply offensive, and you'll find out why. Pre-retired military chaplains are now speaking out on behalf of other chaplains who are still active, on active duty that are unable to preach openly against sin. For example, in the wake of the Obama administration's repeal of the don't ask, don't tell policy, many military chaplains would be criticized as not a team player or even denied promotions like the 65 evangelicals who are still suing the Navy if they dared to criticize, for example, the sin of homosexuality. But these three retired chaplains are now openly preaching things that other active duty chaplains cannot say. Pentecostal chaplain John Kaufman came out and said this, marriage is the combat multiplier that in that it gives married troops hope and a reason to fight well, defending one's country of which marriage and families are the foundation. But homosexuality is a combat divider, dividing one's reason to live while taking breaks on the combat field to change diapers, all because the treacherous sin causes them to lose control of their bowels. Well, forgive me for the graphic image there, but. Uh, there are physical and biological consequences of that kind of conduct. And he's just pointing that out. I got around to taking some notes this time. And Klinger Schmidt, you, you're such an asshole. <laughs> you, first of all, he says you're, these pastors are unable to preach against sin, which means they don't get to push the religious dogma down people's throats down there. You know, these people are out there doing a damn hard job, not one I would want. I, my job is hard enough as it is. I don't need to be firing bullets at people, you know, and shit like that. So We're getting fire, bullets fired at you. Or get fired, yeah, people are out there. Yeah, you're actually a, actively at a job where people are trying to actively kill you. 
You don't go up and give them daisies. They, they're they trying to kill you. Mm-hmm. So you'd fucking tell me that they don't get to say, hey, fucker, you, you're doing something that the Bible thinks is bad. So fuck off. Not a team player because Domo was repealed. Yes, you know what, right? Domo was repealed because people have come to their fucking senses. Domo, it, because it's gone, it's working now. The military, they did massive tests on this to be sure if re, uh, removing Domo was going to hurt the military. There were some people who dropped out. That's fine. And you know what? Those people are bigots, and they deserve to be gone. The rest of the military who have dealt with people in the military that they knew were gay, but they didn't say anything because they didn't want to jeopardize their jobs, then those people need to be commended. So, you know, and it's none of their business who they have sex with or who they love. That's that's none of their business. Uh, he says homosexuality is a sin because they find it icky or they, because their Bible says it's homosexuality is a sin. You know what? Go fuck off. Seriously. This is your your whole thing is just because you don't like it or because Paul was basically a bigot and a homophobe. So you think you, that justifies you being a homophobe. Again, go fuck off. And then he goes on to say about the thing about marriage troops er, and gay troops. We'll have this, the difference between married troops and gay troops there. You know, there is no difference. Gay troops can ha- who are married can have hope also. Anybody can have hope. It's not a Christian privilege. It doesn't like, oh, you get to have hope, but because you're not a Christian, you don't get to have hope. Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, the change the diapers thing? Okay. People have anal sex. Straight couples have anal sex. Straight oh. females straight f- straight females have anal sex with their boyfriends. Tell it, Packard. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> and you see them out changing their diapers? No, you don't. Because you don't know how a fucking no. sphincter... You don't know how the fucking sphincter works. A sphincter is a tight muscle. And just because you have anal sex doesn't mean that your ain't your sphincter is going to be open all the time. They think it's like a, a Tupperware lid. You take it off, and it's just open all the time. So all your bowels just fall right out. Durf! Fucking people. Oh, and pointing it out? He's, well, I'm just pointing it out. Repeating a lie doesn't make it any more true. If I... If, 10,000 people said that the sun was made out of green cheese. It doesn't make it fucking true. Joe, your thoughts. Yeah, I tell you, these uh, homophobic clowns are obsessed with butt sex. Yes, they are. All Mm -hmm. they think about is three things. The whipping and torture of Jesus, uteruses, and butt sex. You hardly hear anything (laughs) else from them. Yeah. Um, Wait, sometimes they claim that they're being oppressed when, when people object to them oppressing other people. So that's four things, but seriously... Some of these religious wingnuts just need to get laid. I bet <laughs> half of them would shut the fuck up if they weren't so uptight. Right. And maybe they wouldn't stop worrying so much about other people's sex lives. All right. You know, and I think the biggest reason I and, and it this is a, this is a basic fact that the most people who are against homosexual sex, gay men especially, are the ones who are generally hiding something. They're they're repressing their most desired urges that they're deep down that they are homosexual but they're like oh i'm not homosexual oh no 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 no, not me not me oh you know it, it it's it's fairly true you know and i'm willing to bet you that klinger schmidt is a closeted homosexual i think he is the way he he goes on about it all the time anything last thoughts on that joe <laughs> well let's see you covered the sphincter right <laughs> I covered the sphincter with a t- with a Tupperware with a diaper, whatever. You, co- you, you covered anal sex. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Okay, <laughs> Connie, your thoughts. <laughs> you guys have pretty much covered it, but um, I was kind of interested in the idea that so many preachers, uh, conservative preachers, you know, like the, not conservative, they're actually fundamentalists, are very obsessed with the physics of. Mm-hmm. You know what? What do gay men and women do in in bed, and how is that? How is that even important? And right. uh, I said, well, is this actually maybe a mental disease? Is this something they can't really help? And I look, tried to look it up, and it says sexual obsessions in the context of OCD are extremely common. Oh, really? And they can be extremely debilitating, making the sufferer ashamed and reluctant to seek help. This is off of a wiki page, so. You know, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> people with sexual obsessions are particularly likely to have co-occurring aggressive and religious obsessions. Oh, really? Uh, 
Clinical mm. depression and higher rates of impulse control disorders, though the last is less common in OCD. Mm. And um, yeah, so I th- I think that there might be something there uh, with the, with uh, these preachers who are so adamant that this is this is the whole thing. Yeah, um, I found Stephen Fry's blog, and he said, you know, it's not even necessarily all that common. Not not every gay you know, gay couple practice that and right. uh, practice anal sex. And like you all said, I, I looked it up. I said, okay, does does it damage? And the this one site said, look, if you use proper lubrication and, and if you're, you know, if you're not drunk, if you're not, you know, and you're being gentle with your partner, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's fine. And actually it strengthens the muscles. Right. Uh, they said if stretching out muscles was debilitating than yoga p- practitioners would be having oh, yeah. a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Why, why do we so, see more yoga people out there going, oh, well, I can't move because I stretched out my muscles. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's just such ignorance on the part of, it was just a cursory question on Google and I found this and it's like, really? So, um, but you know, the sheep, the, the, the sheep that follow these guys won't bother to you know, look outside of their sources. Mm-hmm. I hope most of them will, but well, of course yeah. they're not going to because it, it, because science <clears throat> is scary. Me. You yeah. know, <laughs> science you know, science changes you know, things. Of, like, Colonel Clink, when you see Clink and Schmidt, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say. Clink, even Clink was smarter than this dope. Dismissed. <laughs> Dismissed. Mm. Hogan. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Give him a monocle. Oh, and did you know that I forgot this? To actually, I li- actually I like story. Colonel Clink appe- was one of those window opening uh, things on the old Batman TV series. He actually oh, yeah. made a little cameo. So <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I actually anyway. like the guy who played Clink, <laughs> who played Clink actually. So mm-hmm. I, I thought he was a good actor. So he was pre- he's actually, actually a dramatic he was pretty actor. Funny. Yeah. And that's totally a bunny trail. I yeah, bunny trail. So. Yeah, we're down the bunny trail. <laughs> So, <laughs> can I mention something uh, to sure. touch on something Connie said? Sure. Uh, she she said that um, sometimes uh, these people become sexually obsessed. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I shared this story on the podcast once before. I don't remember. But um, when I was in high school, I was talking to a friend of mine, mm-hmm. and she said that she would go to uh, Catholic confessionals. Right. Because, you know, she was told you have to do that every now and then. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, she told me she stopped going. I was like, why did you stop going? And she said, well, every time I'd go in there, the priest would be on the other side of the screen, and he would say, uh, "Have you been having sex? Did you do anything sexual?" Mm-hmm. And she would say, "Well, no, I'm here for something else." And he would say, "Well, come back when you have something sexual." Really? And he would send her away. Whoa! Like, the the creepy priest only wanted to hear sexy stories from the teenage girl, and it's like, "Ooh, that's Ugh. fucking creepy." And she's like, "Yeah, I thought so too. That's why I don't go anymore. I don't oh care." Oh my god, <laughs> that is creepy. Yeah, I, pre, you're a preacher. Yeah, I was touching myself, and I was touching myself, and I, t- and he's going, he, I bet she's sitting in the room going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Who knows what he's doing on the other side of that screen? Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, you can't see him. That's right. That's why the wall. That's why the door. That's why they take a bucket in there with them because they got to wash down the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Like a new a new priest comes on duty Whoa. and he looks in there. He's like, "All right, who was in here last? Who was in your last?" Clipboard, board, <laughs> checks the clipboard. He's like, "Father Ferdinand, you need to get down here and take care of this." Right here's the squeegee. <laughs> it's on the ceiling again. <laughs> squeegee time for the pre- confessional. Anyway, you know the rules. You've been here long enough. <laughs> Speaking of. Uh... <laughs> I have no, I have no segue for this. <laughs> Sign up for the professional room. Is really well, actually, I do have one. Speaking, ingested, huh? right? Actually, speaking, speaking of magical, or magic and magical things, let's get on to the next topic for this evening. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on. And on tonight's Did You Know They're an Atheist, we're going to be talking about Daniel Radcliffe. You know, the guy who played Harry Potter. He was born in July of, uh, he was born in July, no, that's a different movie. <laughs> you know, they're born in July, <laughs> 1990, uh, born in July 23rd, 1999, or 1989, English film and stage actor, <laughs> I, I, I still can't get it straight, who <laughs> rose the prominence by playing the ter- title character, Harry Potter. He was born to a Northeastern Irish Protestant father and a Jewish mother, both were whom were initially 
adamant against their son entering the entertainment industry due to the religious uh, piety. I guess, you know, you can't be on film, man. We just don't want people to see us, you know. Uh, around 12 years old, Radcliffe became decidedly less religious. I realize, he says, I realize I can't be, uh, believe more out of fear than anything else. He said, ultimately, his folks backed him into a, him into his ambitions. He's also said in a pro, uh, in a pronouncement that he that will dismay American religious right. He has long voiced suspicions about Harry po- about Potter's anti Christian message. The 19 year old actor said he does not believe in God. He was interviewed by Esquire magazine. In July of 2009, he said, There was never religious faith in my house, in the house. I think of myself as being Jewish and Irish, despite the fact that I'm English. My dad believes in God, I think. I'm not sure if my mom does. I don't. I have a problem with religion or anything else that says we have all the answers because there's no such thing as the answers. We're complex. We change our minds on issues all the time. Religion leaves no room for human human complexity. And another quote here. With an interview with Attitude magazine, Daniel Radcliffe talked about being a militant atheist. He says, I quote, I'm not religious. I'm an atheist and a militant atheist when religion starts impacting on legislation. We need sex education in schools. Schools have to talk to kids at from a young age about relationships, gay and straight. In Britain, it's better. More of a conservative uh, conversation is being had. So right there, he says he's an atheist. Joe, your thoughts? No, I'm a I'm I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I saw all the movies in the theater, usually on opening night, surrounded by kids dressed in Hogwarts robes, waving their wands around. And this segment is called "Did You Know They Were an Atheist?" Mm-hmm. And I did know Mr. Radcliffe. It was among our ranks. Uh, he features prominently on a lot of atheist memes mm-hmm. that are going around the internet. Uh, and if you double check the quotes, uh, they come from interviews that he gave in magazines, some of which uh, you, you just read. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think cool. Daniel Radcliffe, the chosen one, the atheist that defeated Voldemort by dying <laughs> and coming back to life like Jesus. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Is uh, one of us. Woohoo! <laughs> And he has some dynamite quotes to back it up. So Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Kind of your thoughts. Yeah, very well-spoken uh, young man, I guess. And, um, yeah, we love Harry Potter here, too. We, we, we came to it late, but I started reading the books to my kids once we saw the first movie and uh, enjoyed them so much and the movies. Uh, you get to see all those kids grow up and really grow into their acting skills. They. Mm-hmm. Or a bit choppy when they began, but oh uh, yeah, well no, I love his uh, Daniel Radcliffe. He has a lot of uh, charity work that he does. One of them is the Trevor Project, which is LGBT suicide prevention, and so yeah, I I don't know. I am he oh he also is uh, has a huge amount of respect for Richard Dawkins. As mm-hmm. He said that if, if Richard Dawkins is ever on TV, he will uh, tune in and watch him. So cool. Um, let's if for a long time though, you kind of were talking about his birth date his birth date is july 23rd 1989 harry potter in the books was born on july 31st uh somewhere between 1979 or 1981 Mm. and uh so for a long time it was wrongly reported that he actually had the same birthday as harry (laughs) potter i guess i never heard that i I never heard that one either that's funny i he he might always be harry potter and actually he's been saying that that's that's not such a bad thing um I would love to see the series done again, only this time as a TV series. I think it would fit oh. really well. You'll get to get more of all the details, which if you've read the books, that's usually our complaint. Is like, there's so much more. It doesn't matter that it was red herrings. There's so many characters and so much yeah. depth in the books that she wrote in. Uh, we'd love to see more of it. I, but uh, I wish I could yeah. say I, I wish I could say I've sat down and got a chance to watch all of them, but I haven't, unfortunately. I've just been too busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have so, to do yeah. that one of these days. Uh yeah, so Daniel Radcliffe, he's he's out there. He's Harry Potter. He's magical and he's an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he's not magical, he's just magical on TV or actually in the movies actually. And of course, in the movies, anybody can be magical, even Jesus. You know, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way he's gonna be magical because it's it's all fake people that all that religion shit's all fake. Anyway, uh, we want to thank everybody for coming, 
and uh, join us here tonight. We'll be back next week with our regular longer show. And, of course, like I said, if you want to get in contact with us, the number again is 662-709-PPAP or 662-709-7727. We want to hear from you. So give us a call. Leave your name and a message and tell us what you think, what we got right, what we got wrong. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear it. We'll play it here on the air. This is, anyway, we'll talk to you next week. This will be Packard Pokes. It, this, <laughs> this has been Packard Sonic. This and we'll be. <laughs> I forgot my out loud. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. This is Packard Sonic. <laughs> we just poked at your news. And that's a wrap. <laughs>